today I'm going to present the paper Sensing the Noise, Uncovering Communities in Darknet Traffic that was realized in the Smart Data Interdepartmental Center of Politecnico di Torino in Italy. Uh, first of all, I'll start with a bit of background and terminology. One thing that we need to specify when dealing with uh, darknets is that uh, they have nothing to do with uh, the dark web or deep web concepts, but uh, in this case, we uh, define darknets as a set of IP addresses that are advertised without answering any traffic. So, um, by passively recording this uh, kind of traffic, we can assist on uh, network monitoring activities and uh, cybersecurity purposes. The concept of darknet is similar to a sort of uh, set of mailboxes in the desert, meaning that uh, they are not related to any proper household and they only receive uh, um, unwanted uh, mails. Um, in the same way, uh, the traffic hitting the darknet is uh, unsolic unsolicited by definition and it is useful for cybersecurity and network monitoring. In literature, we find uh, um, uh, research papers that use this kind of traffic that, uh, to spot misconfigurations, uh, identify distributed denial of service attacks, uh, analyze uh, the internet censorship during specific events, or uh, estimate the IPv4 address space utilization. Um, our research question in this paper um, is uh, can we um, use darknets in order to automatically detect coordinated events uh, happening on the network and use them as a first sensor to uh, trigger some alarms um, for what's happening or what may happen also in live network. But what do we mean by coordinated events? Uh, we can have uh, um, malicious coordinated events like, uh, for instance, botnets. One of the most famous example in the recent past is the Mirai botnet, uh, targeting especially IoT devices. But we can also have internet-wide scans um, that were made uh, for um, research purposes. Uh, in a previous work, we were able to analyze two IPv4 darknets of uh, different size and different geolocation in order to try to characterize this traffic and uh, um, highlight the differences and similarities. Uh, what we found out by uh, starting to check the um, time patterns of these uh, darknets was that even if uh, uh, we tried to remove the noise, so we only addresses the, the top talkers, uh, addresses, meaning the sources that produced 10 flows at least in one hour bin, uh, we see that the packets, the number of packets is still very noisy and irregular and uh, it is very difficult to find some similarities uh, over uh, the different darknets. But if we enrich these um, the informations we have with, for instance, the mapping of the autonomous system, um, autonomous system source, what we find out is that uh, um, a very large amount uh, um, of packets hitting the darknet is produced by um, a small number of IPs and some of these IPs uh, appear um, over all the darknets that we analyze. For instance, this autonomous system source targets the Italian darknet, the Brazilian darknet and also the Dutch darknet that we used for reference. So starting from this information, um, we begin to wonder whether there is an efficient representation of uh, darknet traffic uh, in order to ease this analysis and uh, start to automatically detect this kind of um, coordinated activities. But in particular, when looking for an efficient representation, uh, we started to wonder how to represent the relationships between uh, nodes, uh, uh, sources and destination, what do we mean by common behavior and how can we filter um, noisy traffic. Uh, we uh, engineered a pipeline uh, which starts from a graph definition then proceeds with a noise filtering technique and uh, um, performs then community detection on top of this graph. This is an example of what we expect to, to get. So uh, graph linking sources and destinations uh, is um, turned out to be a viable solution for our problem 
um, and uh, uh, grouping together by grouping together nodes, what we expected to um, uh, detect were, for instance, uh, botnet infections or other kinds of uh, uh, scanning activities. As we said, uh, a crucial point for uh, the graph definition is uh, to uh, find a meaningful representation for darknet traffic. Considering that uh, the darknet traffic is um, um, unidirectional by definition, we chose to represent uh, the um, we chose to represent it um, in the graph by uh, using a directed uh, graph, which is also bipartite and weighted. Bipartite because we have uh, by definition again um, two kinds of uh, entity: a source and a destination. Uh, sources and destinations can be aggregated at uh, different granularities. Uh, for instance, we can choose to um, aggregate uh, the sources in terms of um, IPs, in terms of ports, uh, autonomous system or subnet. And again, uh, we can perform the same for the destinations. The choice of um, the kind of nodes, uh, source and destination nodes, is a trade-off between the graph size and then uh, the complexity of the calculations that will follow and uh, the information relevance and interpretability. Uh, we did several attempts. For instance, uh, over one week of data from the Italian Darknet, we tried to extract a graph linking IP sources and IP destinations. In this case, we had a precise uh, representation on the sources but the graph was uh, really complex to handle because uh, it could reach up to um, more than uh, 200 million of edges. Uh, the same holds uh, for a port-to-port -port, uh, graph. Uh, it is again too complex uh, and uh, we lose the information about uh, the um, origin entity. So as a trade-off, we tried to define a graph uh, containing as a set of sources the set of origin autonomous systems and uh, as a set of destination the destination ports. Uh, every edge between a source and a destination is weighted by the number of packets uh, um, the source directed towards uh, this specific port. Uh, the noise filtering in, um, in this case is still kind of an open problem. For this preliminary work we uh, decided to include in the graph only the autonomous system which sent at least 100 packets in one week. So we removed the um, non-heavy eaters autonomous systems. Uh, on top of this graph, we uh, tried two um, community detection algorithms, the label prop propagation and the greedy modularity. The results uh, um, yielded by the label propagation uh, were not suitable for this kind of, of graph, which is uh, uh, still very densely connected. And um, this, uh, this algorithm was basically merging all the nodes into a single community. On the other end, the greedy modularity um, turned out to yield uh, some um, very uh, promising results. The my main idea behind the greedy modularity algorithm is uh, to look for a group of nodes which are strongly connected among each other and uh, loosely connected with the rest of the graph. Of course, we have uh, uh, to find a measure for this kind of uh, strong connection and uh, the measure is the modularity. In our graph, modularity goes from 0 to 1 and uh, the higher, the um, stronger is the connection. The algorithm um, evaluates uh, the modularity iteratively. As a first step, it labels all the nodes to um, a different community. So the cardinality of the community set and the cardinality of the vertices coincide. As a second step, um, all the neighboring communities are merged together and we calculate all the gain in modularities. Um, we choose to keep the merging as a third step where the, um, the gain in modularity is um, maximum and we repeat uh, steps 2 and 3 until the gain in modularity is null all over the graph. Uh, in our specific case, uh, every packet of the trace gets uh, two labels according from the point of view that we, um, from which we observe. Uh, we have a source label, so autonomous system community, and a destination label. 
So every entity in the graph will have this uh, twofold labeling. For instance, if we consider community C3, and in particular we refer to this source, it will have a single autonomous system community, which is C3 itself, but the uh, port community will be twofold. Uh, because uh, some of the activity of this source is directed uh, towards the C3 and some of the activity is directed to um, C1. In the same way, the, this, uh, this target in C2 will have a single port community, which is C2 itself, but it will have uh, uh, several autonomous systems community because uh, uh, the sources hitting it are coming from C4 C2 and C1. Uh, this is uh, an image, an example of the results uh, that we expect to get. For instance, here we see uh, two very um, requested services on top of the Italian darknet. We were able to generate a total of 18 communities. More in detail, we see that uh, communities IT4 and uh, IT0 are the largest in, term, in terms of volume, both taking a look at the source's point of view and at the destination's point of view. But uh, receiving the largest amount of traffic doesn't uh, necessarily coincide with uh, uh, including the largest number of autonomous systems of ports or ports. Uh, if we take a look at the scatter plot, we see that, for instance, uh, IT3 shows a very interesting pattern. Uh, it includes a very large number of ports uh, and a very small number of autonomous systems, meaning that uh, uh, the sources included in this community are performing what we call an horizontal scan. So they are targeting a very large set of uh, destination ports in order maybe to um, look for uh, some uh, vulnerable services. Uh, on the other end, we have uh, the vertical scan patterns. Uh, in this case, IT1 includes a very large number of autonomous systems uh, targeting a very small number of ports. So probably the sources included in this, um, in this community are uh, really willing to find vulnerabilities uh, or to access services over a, a concentrated set of, um, set of targets. Um, these results uh, are um, better visible if we take a look at this heat map. For instance, uh, if we focus on community IT2 and IT1, we see that uh, the traffic directed towards uh, the top 50 ports uh, that we see in the trace uh, is very distributed over targets. And uh, in this case, uh, we um, talk about uh, horizontal scan. On the other end, if we focus on IT4 and IT6, we see that a very large uh, volume of packets is directed towards a um, single um, or just a few uh, specific targets. And this is exactly the pattern of a vertical scan. Uh, from this heat map, we were able to extract some time patterns uh, here again we see IT4, which is uh, the largest community in terms of volume. We see that in general um, the, um, the targets are uh, the ones that we highlighted and the traffic is very noisy, together with the two targets that we already uh, underlined. There are uh, some other very, um, very common um, requested uh, ports, like SSH and Telnet. Uh, while a more interesting pattern is the one we find in IT15, in which we see that the algorithm was able to automatically detect the requests performed by some sources towards a set of adjacent ports, which most likely belong to um, the same framework. And uh, we have to underline that uh, um, when trying to detect this pattern, we didn't need any manual intervention. So uh, community detection um, is a viable approach when it comes to the detection of coordinated events. Uh, we presented some um, promising results coming from the GMA algorithm that of course can uh, be further tuned and, um, and uh, they, we, are, we expect them to, to be better in the future. 
especially when targeting the noise filtering aspect, which, uh, which is in this paper still uh, uh, critical. And uh, we believe as a future work, we will be really able to fine tune also um, this aspect and make a um, more automatic noise filtering, uh, noise filtering criterion. And uh, um, with this, I conclude. Thank you very much for your attention and I'll be glad to answer to your questions.